What's up, Refuge family? Welcome back to another Refuge Daily. Super glad to have you guys join us. I will be completing and finishing the conversations that I've been having with you guys on the series I've been going through with my junior hires called Stretch. Over the last couple of weeks uh, through the series, we've learned a couple different ways we can stretch. We stretched our bodies, literally, um, stretch our brains, um, and hopefully we've been stretching uh, our faith too. And all of that stretching is really, really great. But is it possible to stretch too far? Um, have you guys ever strained, sprained, or pulled a muscle? I used to do it all the time. I used to play basketball when I was in high school, and my ankles got destroyed. My older brother, even more so. Um, but I had a, a lot of opportunities to overstretch uh, muscles and pull things, playing sports. Um, if you are familiar with football, the FIFA kind, I know Jeff and David, uh, pastors here, are really, really familiar with FIFA. <laughs> Um, not the American football, but uh, soccer. Uh, you know injuries are pretty common. And sometimes these injuries are real, but faking an injury is sometimes also part of the strategy of the game to get a player, a card, a yellow card, or a red card, yellow card, kind of a penalty, red card, and they sit out the rest of the game. And it kind of really sucks. Um, either way, when a player gets injured, they sometimes need to be carried off the field on a stretcher. Um, unfortunately, the stretcher experience can all sometimes be more painful than the original injury there's this viral video that came out during a soccer match of where the soccer player legitimately get injured he wasn't faking it and they put him on the stretcher and they kept dropping him over and over again um got to give the stretcher guys credit and they're not um in that particular instance they weren't great at their jobs but they kept trying um, you and I have probably never dropped someone on a stretcher, but we definitely know sometimes it takes a few tries to get things right. I think of a Rubik's Cube. Um, if you've attempted to solve a Rubik's Cube before, it takes a lot of trial and error um, how to solve it. You try, fail, then retry again. I have never personally solved a Rubik's Cube. I've tried. I've had people giving me instructions on how to do it. Still failed. I've looked it up. Failed. Um, no one solves the Rubik's Cube correctly the first time unless you're like a super genius. It takes a lot of patience to learn how to solve one, um, let alone sl solve one in a record time. Um, but for the last few weeks, we've been talking about how you can grow uh, and strengthen your faith by stretching it, just like you would a muscle. Uh, you can stretch your faith, um, we discussed, by making a commitment to grow. Um, that starts somewhere, right? You have, to, you have to make that choice in your life, your daily habits, which was the next one, start a new habit. Um, start something that will help um, encourage your faith uh, to grow. Um, another concept we talked about was letting go of an old habit. That's what I talked about last time on Refuge Daily. Letting go of an old habit that's keeping you from growing. When we decide to grow, whether that's physically, spiritually, we all start with big commitments and great intention, but intentions. But here's the truth. At some point, we're going to experience setbacks. It's just the reality of the life we live. The commitment that we make will sometimes feel less exciting, interesting, or urgent than it did in the beginning. And so you forget to practice the new habit you started, and you'll once again grab on to the old habit that you tried to give up. Um, someday, what I'm going to get across here is you're going to fail. And when you fail, what will you do? I know no one likes to admit uh, their failure, so I'll go first and break the ice when it comes to my faith. I failed many times. Um, I shared my testimony a couple weeks uh, ago, and that really you could see in that my whole story, the amount of times I failed, I failed to recognize who God was and uh, the, the importance that he played in my life. Um, and so I didn't even have any faith <laughs> for a certain amount of uh, time. I didn't put any trust or faith and never put that in the Lord. So that really impacted me and um, that experience of failure. When I, even after when I did come to faith, the, the process of breaking out of my old habits, habits breaking out of my old habits <laughs> and moving on was a, a hard thing to do. And so there are many reasons why we might fail in our faith. Um, maybe we commit to reading the Bible every day, but we don't make it a habit to pray consistently, but suddenly realize it's been months since we last talked to God. The busyness of life, work, bills, um, hardships of life when we go through trials, it can really, really kind of pull us. Um, and when we fail, um, we often feel defeated, uh, ashamed, and hopeless. And we sometimes even have that, that inkling just to kind of give up. Today, I want to challenge you to think differently about failure. 
Um, what if failure isn't something to fear or be ashamed of? What if failure can actually help our faith grow? Um, I, I personally believe that fa failure is just a part of the stretch that we go through as believers. Some of the greatest heroes in the Bible um, were people who were, uh, you might consider also epic failures at the same time. I think of Moses who was chosen uh, to lead God's people, but he was terrible at public speaking. And he also once killed somebody. And he also misrepresented God when he, when he broke the rock uh, angrily. Um, so like big failures right there. But these are, are people we consider um, people with great faith. Uh, we have Sarah, who was told by God that she'd be a mother at an old age, but she laughed in God's face and took matters into her own hand. Another failure right there for you. God made David king of Israel, but David used his power to take advantage of a woman and had her husband killed. That is, that is pretty awful. Um, one of Jesus' Jesus's closest disciples, Peter, denied have, having ever known Jesus, and he cut off a guy's ear with a sword. All of these great biblical heroes failed, but their failures weren't the end of their stories, even when they failed. That's the, that is the blessing of grace from God. Because um, even when they failed, they let their faith be stretched. Moses' faith was stretched when he saw that God could use him, um, despite his past mistakes and his present fears. Sarah's faith was stretched when she discovered God only forgave her, not only forgave her doubts and disobedience, but still gave her what was promised to her, a son. Um, David's faith was stretched when God allowed him to experience, experience both great grace and justice for the wrongs he committed. I, my mouth is like really dry now, um, so excuse my stumbling of words. And Peter, my favorite one, Peter's faith was stretched when Jesus not only forgave him for denying him, but then promised to make Peter a great leader in the history of God's church. All of these people were failures, but their failures weren't the end of their stories. Um, and that's a lesson for us. For these followers of God, failure was just another stretch that helped them develop a stronger faith. I want to read something to you. I actually have to pull it up because I didn't have it up. Um, but Romans 7, 15 through 25, if you guys would like to turn there and read this with me, um, I think that would be awesome. Romans 7, 15 through 25. I do not understand what I do for what I want to do, I do not do, but what I hate I do. And if I do what I do not want to do, I agree that the law is good. As it is, it is no longer I myself who do it, but it is sin living in me. For I know that good itself does not dwell in me, that is in my sinful nature. For I have the desire to do what is good, but I cannot carry it out. For I do not do the good I want to do, but the evil I do not want to do, this I keep on doing. Now, if I do what I do not want to do, it is no longer I who do it, but it is sin living in me who does it. So I find this law at work. Although I want to do good, evil is right there with me. For in my inner being, I delight in God's law. But I see another law at work in me, waging war against the law of my mind and making me a prisoner of the law of sin at work within me. What a wretched man I am who will rescue me from this body that is subject to death. Thanks be to God who delivers me through Jesus Christ, our Lord. So then, I myself in my mind am a slave to God's law, but in my sinful nature, a slave to the law of sin. So Romans, um, written by Paul, one of the most influential leaders in the history of the church, whose letter to the Romans have been kind of the core um, of this uh, series uh, and what we've been reading, but he understood failure well. Even Paul, the great church leader and super Christian, uh, said he struggled. Um, in that passage, it can be summarized, he didn't understand why he did what he did when he when he had that desire to do wrong. He wanted to do the right thing, but he couldn't seem to do it. Um, he There's a lot of the word do in there, do this, do that, do this. I want to do the right thing, but I keep doing the bad thing. He often did the things he hated and he couldn't stop. Um, and he was always at war, this war he talks about between good and evil. That desire to do good, but that desire also to do evil. And he sometimes felt hopeless. He was real. Um, but he trusted that God would always rescue him. Um, when I read Paul's words, I see that two reasons he often failed are the same two reasons you and I can fail. We fail to stop, right? We have these, these, these habitual habits of sin that we get caught into. We try to stop doing what we know we shouldn't do, but we keep failing. And then the other thing that we fail to do is we fail to start. We try to start doing things we know would 
that we should do, but keep failing at that as well. And another letter, um, this one to the Christians in a city called Corinth, so Corinthians, uh, but 2 Corinthians, Paul spoke about a specific area of his life that caused him to struggle. This is 2 Corinthians 12, um, 7 through 10. I'm going to pull that up again. Second Corinthians 12, 7 through 10. Or because of these surpassingly great revelations, therefore, in order to keep me from becoming conceited, I was given a thorn in my flesh, a messenger of Satan, to torment me. Three times I pleaded with the Lord to take it away from me, but he said to me, My grace, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all more gladly about my weaknesses so that Christ's power may rest on me. That is why, for Christ's sake, I delight in weakness and in insults and hardships and persecutions and difficulties. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Not only did Paul fail when it came to sin, um, but there was also times when Paul felt overwhelmed weak and powerless. I'm sure many of us have experienced that feeling uh, in our lives. But rather than being frustrated or angry about his weaknesses, Paul found a way to delight or find pleasure in those weaknesses. How? Because I'm sure we would love to understand why that is the reality for Paul. Paul understood that his failures and struggles weren't liabilities. They could actually bring him closer to Jesus. When Paul looked at his weaknesses, he saw opportunities for his faith to stretch and grow. You might be excited now about stretching your faith and growing closer to Jesus, but at some point you will feel like a failure. Okay, That is the condemnation of the enemy. He will come at you. He's going to make you shame. He wants, he wants you to, to carry that burden that you are not meant to carry at all. Um, but you'll make mistakes. You'll doubt. You will have questions. We'll lose passion and focus. When you do, remember that God isn't surprised by your failure, and he doesn't leave you alone in it. In it. Your failure is just part of the stretch. Failure will happen, but failure doesn't have to be the end of your story. It doesn't have to be the end of an era. When you fail, and you will, you have two choices. You can let shame, frustration, and hopelessness prevent you from trying again, or you can allow God to use your failure to stretch you and make your faith grow stronger. Next time you fail, whether it's next week or in the next five minutes, completely possible, I hope you choose to keep moving forward, to keep stretching through your failures, But you can, because you can stretch your faith even uh, when you fail. There's a lot of different um, tools that we as believers can use to kind of build um, and help us uh, when we fail. Before you fail, get a community. If you're stumbling, if you have issues with, with sin and you're compromising, surround yourself with someone who can hold you accountable. Next one, when you fail, fall on Jesus. Paul knew that only Jesus could rescue him from himself. And the same is true for you and me. When you fail, fall on Jesus. He won't be angry or disappointed or even surprised. He's God. He knows exactly who you are, what you're going to struggle with, and he loves you anyway. And as a matter of fact, he's going to be closest to you at the times when you need him. God doesn't step away and be like, all right, there you go. Stand up on your own in your hardest times. No, 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 no. The whole point is when we fail, we can get back up because God draws near to our weakness and makes us strong in those moments. So every single day, reflect on that fact. Reflect on that truth, that there's no shame in, in, in grace. There's, there's truth, there's love, there's forgiveness, and there's mercy and the Lord. And so I really hope that guys, uh, that encouraged you. Um, and so this series is coming, series is coming to a close. And I hope you remember this, that if you want your faith to grow and be strengthened, it doesn't happen overnight. It starts somewhere. It can start today, simple, small stretches by making a new commitment, doing something new, letting something go, or even when you fail, God will be there to help stretch and grow your faith. I'm going to close in a word of prayer, and we'll finish up. Heavenly Father, Lord, we're so thankful for the grace that you're pouring out upon us through your Son. You have poured grace upon our sin, Lord, our mistakes, our failures, and you use those opportunities to stretch us, to grow us, and to be with us, to draw near and to give us strength when we are at our weakest state. Help us to boast and delight in that, Lord. Help us to, to severely appreciate 
the grace you're pouring upon us, that no matter the persecution, no matter the trials we face, no matter the rough times we hit, that we would reflect upon that that promise that you will be with us, that you will encourage us, that you will stretch us, that this is all for your glory, that your love and your grace does not escape you, um, even when we are the most frustrating of people to deal with. And so we're grateful for that, Lord. So I, I pray if anyone is feeling the weight of their sin, the condemnation of their sin, that they would recognize your grace, that they would lay it before you, Lord. One of the first steps is being poor in spirit as believers, laying that out and recognizing our sin and submitting it to you. So I pray that you would meet them where they're at, Lord, and that you would remove that burden from them. And in your precious name we pray. Amen. Have a blessed Thursday, guys.